This Sunday, I lean on and share the words of the Reverend William Joseph Adams. If only, if only, these words can haunt us. If only I had turned left instead of right, I could have avoided the accident. If only I had kept my big mouth shut, I would still have a friend. If only I had left 10 minutes later, I could have said goodbye. As a priest and a friend, these words can haunt me, wanting to be there for people and not making it in time. How hard it must have been for Jesus to hear the piercing words from his dear friends, Mary and Martha. If you had been there, Lord, my brother would not have died. Even Jesus didn't make it in time to be with his close friends in their time of greatest need. If only I had been there. But Jesus has the power even over death. We cannot imagine how amazing it must have been to see Lazarus coming through the opening of that cave, blinded by the desert sun, with his grave wrappings flapping in the wind as he stumbled toward his friend and his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. None of us have seen such a sight, or have we? St. John's story of this encounter with the most certainly dead Lazarus isn't just about the revival of a corpse. The authors of the New Testament were not interested in resuscitation. They were interested in resurrection. The story of the raising of Lazarus from the grave given to us late in our Lenten season shows us the Christian Easter experience. It prefigures it. The raising of Lazarus is a most fantastic sign, but like all signs, too, it is meant to point to something beyond itself. In our anticipation of Lazarus emerging from the stone tomb, let us not miss the many moments of resurrection in St. John's story. Let us not miss how humanly tender this Jesus of resurrection really is. The human tenderness of Christ, of the living God, is also a sign of great importance and has everything to do with resurrection in our lives today. When Jesus finally meets up with Martha and Mary and the others gathered in their home, it becomes very clear that Jesus is disturbed deeply. He is, in fact, so deeply disturbed that he breaks down and weeps with a piercing sadness in his heart. For those who prefer a Jesus who doesn't have too much human blood running through his veins, Jesus offers himself here as an archetypal human being, the one who can show us how to best achieve our own true humanity. If Jesus were not capable of weeping for the love of a friend, resurrection would mean very little, and I doubt that over two billion people worldwide would call him Lord and Savior. When we bleed and when we cry, and when we die a little inside, that, if that pain can't somehow reach Christ's heart, then what real difference can Christ make in our lives, no matter how many times we might shout Alleluia in church? William Adams continues, The Christ of God, the Lord and Savior of the world, weeps with us. That alone is enough to call me forth from the grave of loneliness, that alone makes Jesus the resurrection and the life for me. In the little town of San Jose de Garcia in Mexico, there is an 82-foot statue of the broken Christ. The huge stone is missing an arm and a leg and part of the face. The little town is finding it difficult to manage the number of pilgrims who come to see the statue. Thousands and thousands of people every year flock to see a broken Christ. The inscription at the bottom of the statue 
is in Spanish and reads in part, leave me broken. I'd like that when you look at me broken like this, you'd remember many of your brothers and sisters who are broken. For thousands and thousands of people, that broken image of Christ has brought resurrection and hope and new life. It is a pillar of comfort for many who pass by. In our gospel this week, we take notice that when Martha speaks of resurrection, she makes the same mistakes that most all of us make. She places it in the future. She says, oh, I know that my brother will rise again on the last day. Isn't that how most of us think about resurrection? That whatever it is, it waits for me out there, somewhere near my last day, somewhere out there after my physical death. But people so often need resurrection now, not somewhere down the road. And Jesus understood just that, and so he answers, I am the resurrection and the life. I am, present tense, right now, the resurrection and the life. I can raise you up and give you life right now and in every moment of your existence. It is only after this that the sign of the raising of Lazarus is given. It is the broken Christ who calls out, Lazarus, come forth. It is the broken Christ who gives the command, unbind him. I truly believe that what people want and need most from their God is an enduring, caring, understanding presence. There are lots of walking dead in our midst, and they don't particularly want to hear about some Olympian God. They want the Jesus who wept at their friend's funeral. They want a Christ who is a wounded healer. They want and need resurrection now, not only at the hour of their death. They want a resurrection that comes from the hope and knowledge that no matter what, they are loved, that their tears are always mixed with the tears of God and lo that loves what is inside of them. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, right now, this second, in this place and wherever you are, always, and for life everlasting. Amen.